All right, hello again, and welcome to another episode of Dread Skates. Today, we're going to talk about this. So what is this? This is the Ride Neo Neobox V4. And let me just show you what makes this particularly special. Are you getting it quite yet? Let's enhance. So this is the Inertion Fock Box. This is generally regarded as essentially bulletproof in terms of reliability. This is no longer available. This just came out. And while it's in pre-production, it is slated to go into a uh, full release next month. And you can actually go to the link down in the description here if you want to get your own. Uh, there is two versions, the V4 and the V6 hardware. Uh, the V4 is essentially a one-to-one -one recreation of the original Fogbox hardware. Uh, it's rated for 80 amps, uh, just like the original. And we're currently testing this right now. So it still remains to be seen as to whether or not it's going to have the same amount of reliability as the original, but we've got our fingers crossed because Essentially what happened a while back was, not a while back, let's call it exactly six months, uh, somebody posted on the forum, hey, why did they stop making these? And the answer to that is probably more complicated uh, than I'm making it out to be, but Inertion stopped producing these to uh, focus solely on the Foxbox Unity. Uh, and we all know how that went. And if you don't know how that went, uh, it ended in a fiery crash off of a cliff, financially speaking. So now we're left with no fuck box. But... As I focus! Now, a new contender has entered the ring, uh, Ride Neo, and you may have heard of them from the decks that they released not too long ago that were kind of... Uh, custom like in-body designed uh, bamboo skateboard decks specifically for e-skate and now this company or the parent company of this uh, actually makes OEM batteries for electric vehicles uh, as far as I can tell and uh, the owner is on the forum and somebody mentioned that hey why can't Inertion just keep making or make some more fuck boxes and uh, the owner of this company was like, yeah, why can't they? We could do it in three weeks. Uh, to which the rest of the community responded with, wait, what? <laughs> and so uh, money was put where mouths were, and three weeks later, they had a functioning, uh, well, not functioning, they had a PCB and a production plan for the next two months. Uh, unfortunately, the original release schedule went from three months to six, uh, because in the intervening time, the world kind of caught on fire, and the rest is history. But this is not history. This is, in fact, the future of the distant past. So let's take a look inside and see what's making these tick. So as you can see, it's almost like looking in a mirror. There are a few small tweaks here in terms of uh, some of the OEM capacitors that they used. Uh, these are essentially the same narrow fire rod rating as these. Uh, they're just a little bit shorter. Um, I think that was maybe to potentially accommodate some more space in the case. And the case is also interesting. Um, there were some design choices on this one that I'm not 100% sold on yet that I kind of liked a little bit better on the original. And that's if you see, uh, there's a punch through on the top of the case and the neo boxes actually sit in the lid of this rather beefy enclosure and then you actually route the cables in through these little side channels and while it probably looks a little bit cleaner I think for ease of access I'm actually going to leave the top off um, but other than that it's an interesting design choice we'll see if it pays off uh, functionally, though, these should be identical. 
should be able to run 80 amps all the angry pixies through both of these just the same as you would this one and another thing that makes this particularly special is the price this is eighty dollars this new was about a hundred bucks if i recall it was about nine, i would think like 90 or 100 bucks when they were new now they go for about 125 dollars uh, when you can find them. And I've seen them go for as much as $180. $80, this is huge. And let me explain why that's huge. By showing you something that's incredibly cheap. So before, if you wanted a cheap ESC, or let's just call it affordable, maybe not cheap, I mean, that's a little less generous, you would go with this guy. The Flipsky 4.12, or perhaps the 4.2. I'm not sure if this is still in rotation, but there are still plenty of these out there. As a matter of fact, you can still find this one for about 70 bucks on Amazon with Prime, uh, before Prime stopped existing. And this is pretty much the go-to to all of your entry-level DIY enthusiasts. This is what a lot of people put in their first board. The QA on these is... A little hit or miss actually let's just call it what it is it's a lottery uh, whether you get a working one or a dud is kind of up in the air and they can't take a lot these are only rated for 50 amps I know it says it's got that 240 amp burst um, I've never run these at more than 45 just to be safe and they definitely are not capable of FOC so that's that so you could either have that or you could have this big difference. This is nice. This is a CNC aluminum case for with Foxbox hardware. So essentially building off of the lineage of what is regarded to be a bulletproof ESC by the community. So you can have this or you can have this. I'm going to go with this. And like I said, if you want to go with this right now, uh, I've included links to the forum post below where this all started so you can get all of the specs and pretty pictures there. And also a link to the store page for the Neobox V4 and V6 if you want to get a set for yourself. Uh, I plan to do a follow-up video on these where I review them a little more in depth. Uh, but until then, I actually have to cut this video short because I need to get these installed on my board and start writing again. So until next time, uh, please like and subscribe and stay safe and keep riding.